of Dream City again. Hello and welcome to this, the very first episode of Night City Wire, a brand new series from us at CD Projekt Red where we'll be talking about all things Cyberpunk 2077. For today's episode, we'll be starting with a brand new trailer. One of our developers will be joining us to help unpack everything you're going to see. We'll have some news, an announcement about a secret collaboration. We'll be taking a look at some brain dance gameplay and welcoming back our developers just to have a chat about everything you're going to see. But there is one more thing. Media all over the world have been getting hands on with Cyberpunk 2077. And when this episode finishes, you'll be able to go and check out exactly what they thought. So let's get started. It is time to take a look at our brand new trailer. And after that, our lead quest designer, Pavel Sasko, will be joining us because I've got a feeling you're gonna have a few questions after watching this. So let's take a look. Love this town, the city of endless opportunity. Ready to get your cherry popped? Yeah, come on! City like any other, just bigger. Nah, mano, not just any other city. Legends are born here. The major leagues. We're only here because Dex is pulling the strings. Doubt that puts us in the same league as them. But we are, they just don't know it yet. But if you got the cojones, and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. Unless you catch a bullet. Even then, you go out with a bang, right? You know, you can make heaps more eddies as a motivational speaker. Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. So what's the gig, Dex? You meant to come out in one piece? <laughs> how about we go over the plan? There's this prototype tech, a biochip to be precise. Job to grab it. Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm-hmm. Arasaka. We are robbing some heavy hitters. Thought you could blackmail me, fucker! High risk, high reward. First rule of the afterlife. Cut king, baby. Goes without saying, we do this on the hush. Ideally, no bodies. Not a one. Sounds simple enough. Eat lead, assholes! Is it gonna be dangerous? Don't you worry, me, boy. We're bulletproof. Get your ass moving now! What the fuck just happened in there? Can't stop digging night city. Fucking major leagues. Happy now, Jackie? Yep! I fucking hide! Time to bail! Oh my god, we're so fucked. Dex! What the fuck? Game risk it, V. And you. Who are you? So the trailer contains footage from the game's prologue only, but there was an awful lot in it. So Pavel, why don't you try and help us unpack everything that we just saw? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely, I can try. So um, what you have just seen is only the prologue of the game. So that awesome stuff is only happening in the first few quests. What the trailer shows you is really our stage, the night city, you know, this gigantic city built of six completely unique districts surrounded by the seventh one that we call the Badlands. As a player, you are meeting Jackie. Jackie is your friend. Now, they together are trying to reach out for something that is very precious. They are trying to reach out for this chip of immortality, this gateway to eternal life. Jackie introduces you to Fixer Dexter Deshawn. He's a very important person in the social ladder of cyberpunk. He is able to provide the player with various jobs and contracts to be able to gather money, to be able to modify their bodies, push themselves to the limits, to put their hands on the chip. But uh, as you can expect, not everything goes as planned, and, uh, but to, to see it, you will have to play the game. There are an awful lot of really cool things in this trailer, and there's a few that I would just love to talk about a little bit more for the people at home. So let's start with talking about a gang called the Mox. Now, we see a few flashes of them in this trailer. I personally think they're really cool and one of my favorites, but can you give us a little bit more information about them? Oh yes, so uh, the Mox is one of the gangs that player is going to interact with throughout the game. The Mox is the gang that has been formed in 2076 after death of uh, Elizabeth Borden. She was called Lizzie. Now, she was an owner of a brothel and former sex worker, and she was 
protecting working guys and girls from harassment, from abuse, and the gang is really continuing her mission. And as a player, you are going to interact with that gang, meet multiple different NPCs, and craft your own relationship with them, and understand what they are all about. So earlier on, you did mention a seventh district, a place called the Badlands. Now, we saw a few shots of this in the trailer, but I'd love for you to give us a bit more detail about the district outside of the city walls. Okay, so the Badlands is this like dead, dried out space going around the whole night city. And as a player, you'll be able to traverse that space in your car or motorcycle. This is a space that is inhabited by the nomads. Nomads are living in a different families and they are traveling across that space in convoys made out of the cars and motorcycles. And as a player, you will be able to traverse and access different type of open world content that has been prepared specifically for you to that, get that awesome feel of the Badlands as an area. In the trailer, we also saw like a completely metal creature. Now, he didn't look like he was from the Maelstrom gang. This looked like something else. So please tell the people at home, who is this giant metal monster? <laughs> okay, so, so that big dude, that was Adam Smasher. He has been introduced in a pen and paper in Cyberpunk 2020 by our uh, senpai Mike Pondsmith. Adam Smasher is a fully converted cyborg. He is and who was always a loyalist of Arasaka. And uh, time has changed and in 2077 he had to find his own space in uh, Night City. But to uh, find out you'll have to play the game. In this trailer we do see some flashes of a Ripper Doc called Victor Vector. I think if people have watched our previous gameplays they might remember him. But I'd really like for you to give the people at home some more information about what Ripper Docs are and how they'll be interacting with them when they play Cyberpunk. So Reaper Dogs in our game, they are surgeons. They are like a specific type of a job in the social ladder of cyberpunk. Jim, they are accustomed and specialized in replacing limbs uh, to the metal ones. They can basically update your body, enhance your body, change you into this walking war machine. And uh, as a player, you are going to meet different kinds of Reaper Dogs in the, in the game, craft your own relationship with them. Some of them are like important characters for a, for a story. Through that, you will invest uh, eddies that you're gathering to turn your body into this tool that allows you to survive on the streets of Night City. Pavel, thank you so much for joining us. I know you'll be back later in the episode because you're going to be helping us to analyze the brain dance gameplay. But before that, we do have some news to share. Earlier in the year, we announced that if you pick up Cyberpunk 2077 on Xbox One, you'll be able to play it on Xbox Series X when the console launches. And just in case you missed it, it will be the same for PlayStation players as well. If you pick up Cyberpunk 2077 on PlayStation 4, you'll also be able to play it on PlayStation 5 when the console launches. And that's not all. There will be a free upgrade for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, but we'll have more details on that soon. Tonight's city. Before we reveal our first look at the Brain Dance gameplay and welcome back our developers for a chat, there is just one more thing we want to announce. Something that we've been working on in secret for a while. We are very excited to announce our partnership with Studio Trigger and Netflix to bring you Cyberpunk Edgerunners, a standalone anime set in the Cyberpunk universe, which we've been working on for some time now. Edgerunners is due to launch in 2022, but for some more information, let's go to the team in Tokyo. My name is Saya Elder. I am the Japan-based producer for Cyberpunk Edge Runners. What I do basically on this project is that I am a fixer, to put it in the words of the Cyberpunk universe. We are a game company. We are a bunch of nerds, and wherever there are nerds, there's gonna be anime fans. So it was always a dream for us to make anime. When we began this project, we were certain that we didn't want to make a recreation of the game. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a standalone story set in the same universe. The stage is still Night City, but everything else is totally new. New characters, new story. I do like to think that it's going to be a great gateway for newcomers to come and check Cyberpunk game and also the Cyberpunk genre as a whole. 
Right now we're in Nakano, which is one of the biggest anime meccas of the world. Uh, I'm going to take you to Studio Trigger right now because we have the wonderful opportunity to talk to the dream team that will be bringing you this anime. Konnichiwa. Hey, Toriga, no, Daigo Torishimari Yaku no Motsuka desu. Kantokuno Imaishi desu. Character design of Tanto Suru Yoshinari desu. Game no Cyberpunk no fan no kata. え、now it is time to show you some gameplay of Brain Dance. This is a feature that you'll experience when you play Cyberpunk 2077. Brain Dance is essentially a recording of somebody else's experience. It allows you to relive their sense of sight, smell, touch, and even hearing, all thanks to a special device. After the gameplay, I will be welcoming back Pavel Sasko. I will also be joined by Patrick Mills, our senior quest designer and all-round lore master, who will be helping to answer your questions and give you some explanation on how you'll be interacting with Braindance when you play Cyberpunk 2077. So, let's take a look. Plan simple, do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down, everybody! On the ground! I want to see you kissing the flooring! Money! Now! Or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, yeah, hey... I, I, now! Before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was... too much. Felt... I could feel the guy's... pain, his dress, his... hope. Hope wrapped up in something else. Mm-hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. All seems yours. Full cam control and analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind. Roll it back to the top. Can I, can I... All good, neat. Now try fast forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing on the creative. You go in, yeah. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat, the gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. 
You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we said we need to go sacrifice. And remember, keep off the place. As long as you have to leave that. Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now, heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything, every little detail, even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors. Cuddy and uh, surf and Everybody! On the so, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything, all the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks them, makes them pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Uh, what I see you kissing the flooring! Money! Meth! Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the roller's cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hella nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. All right, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. Oh, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, get it, hey, no! Fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision. Then scan it. His own chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the law. So Braindance is a pretty big part of the cyberpunk universe. It's not just something used for adult films. There is an awful lot to it. And there's two sides I'd really like you guys to help me explore. First is the lore. So how this actually fits into the universe. And then there's the gameplay side. So how players will be interacting with it. So Patrick, could you tell us more about the lore of Braindance? I would love to. Uh, so in the world of cyberpunk 2077, Braindance was invented way back in the early 2000s at UC Santa Cruz. It was developed as a way of recording a person's experiences and then playing them back for someone else as, so that they could relive them as though it was happening to them. It was originally used for things like therapy and prisoner rehabilitation, but by 2077 it's become this global media industry, including things like movies, mass, mass entertainment, things like that, video games, some interactive things, and of course adult fare as well. Now, in our game, we deal a lot with black brain dances, or XBDs as we call them, and there are different types of those, but the one that you saw in the trailer just there was a flatliner. Now, that's where the person recording it actually dies during the recording. And it's popular with sort of an illicit kind of a thrill, but a mercenary can also use them for various things, and you'll see that in the game, of course. And from the gameplay perspective, we have been working a lot throughout last year's trying to figure out the best way how to use the brain dance in the game as a mechanics. So what we have settled on is this brain dance editor mode. As a player, you will be able to run the brain dance in the editor mode and see different clues that have been registered on the peripheral of given actor. 
Now, as a player, you can slide on the timeline of that recording, back and forth, trying to uncover different clues. And that clues are actually telling a story in the game. So, as a player, you will run different investigations that will lead you to uh, different mysteries, and you will uncover them actually using that brain dance as a mechanics in the game. So, as Pavel was saying, we use brain dance as a storytelling tool. It's not a collectible. It's not something where you're going to go in and you're going to play it and you're going to be like, ah, I've seen this before. What we use brain dance for is to give you a keyhole into the life of the residents of Night City. And we can explore things like childhood trauma, religion, various philosophical ideas in a way that you might not otherwise experience in a story about a mercenary on the tough streets. So we've tried to talk about some of the aspects that we think the community will find really exciting, but you know, while you're both here, I'd love to know what is it about cyberpunk that you guys are really excited for? Uh, Patrick, why don't you start? So one of the things that I'm most excited about in this game is the characters and the way they interact with the world. We've got this really interesting world that stretches all the way back to the Cyberpunk 2020 source material and all of these events and all of those things, but those don't mean anything unless they connect with characters. And so when we come up with a character, we start with their function. What is this person? What do they do in the story? But we don't stop there. We go back and we figure out what was their childhood like? What was their upbringing like? What kind of obstacles did they face in this harsh reality? And did they overcome them? And how did they overcome them? Or did they not overcome them and why? And you can see all of those things in their environment, in their dialogues, in sort of how they operate in the world. And we come up with that for all of our characters. Now you look at someone like Victor Vector and you're gonna see stories about his past in his environment and in his dialogue. You know, we come up with that stuff even if we don't use it in the game because it helps inform us as to who these characters are. And uh, for me, I, I would not be myself if I would not say that I'm the most excited about our quests. Like with our Witcher 3 team, with, with Patrick and like everybody that has stayed with us since the Witcher 3 time, we really have grown so much. Uh, we have learned so much and we have used all that experience to put them into the quest that we have made. And you will not find really a, a filler in this game. Like everything has a meaning. Like we put so much effort into making sure that everything is rewarding, is interesting, is talking about characters, as Patrick said, is talking about worlds, is talking about emotions, like touching the player in a really, like a real way. Um, and I just can't wait to find out what you think. Pavel, I know you mentioned story and, and quests and writing quests. And when I was last in the studio, I had a look and I saw a notebook on your desk. And I would love for you to show everybody this notebook. <laughs> okay, Holly, I mean, you asked for it. So um, this is uh, my notebook. It says uh, Salsa Quest Designer. Uh, the reason is because I dance salsa and I'm a quest designer, so you know. <laughs> so, so I wrote, started this notebook actually when we were really starting Cyberpunk. At the very beginning, I wrote the, like a first note and it says pretty much something around, along the lines of a, that we were starting with a prototype. And then, you know, I kept on uh, basically noting things that we've been working on um, for like next years. I remember once when our concept artists actually approached me and they said that they want to take a look at my notebook. I was like, what for actually? And they, they, they took some pictures um, and they told me, uh, yeah, well, you know, because we are looking for a reference material for a, a notes of a psychopathic killer. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, well, uh, you may um, find maybe some of my notes um, in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Pavel and Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. I'm pretty lucky because I have read some of the stories that you and the team have written for Braindance, and I'm pretty excited for people to discover them. But uh, before we do finish today's episode, there is just one more thing we'd like to talk about. Earlier in this episode, I mentioned that media have been getting hands-on with the opening of Cyberpunk 2077, and they should be posting their impressions right about now. And if you missed anything from today's episode, don't worry, we'll be uploading everything to our channels very soon. And finally, on behalf of everybody at CD Projekt Red, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us for this, the very first episode of Night City Wire. But don't worry, we'll be back with episode two in just a few weeks. So we shall see you soon. <laughs>